first thing I have to do is go to the applications folder which you can find over here and launch QuickTime Player. After that is done I go to File, New Movie Recording. I'm going to adjust so you can actually see me. Hi there! And I press Record. And as you can see um, it's recording me doing this video. Okay. Now if I wanted to take the background out of the picture, I could actually adjust my camera, which I'm going to do right now. This is a good example of how to create a nice background. I'm videoing myself against my um, eggshell wall, and there you go. All right, so I'm going to press stop now. In this segment, I am going to show you how to use iMovie, the video editing software available on all Macintosh computers. So, as always, I am going to go to my application folder, which I can access by pressing Command Shift A. I then want to find iMovie. I typed in IM, which would jump me to the iMovie application. I'm then going to press Command O, or Apple O, um, to open the iMovie application. I'm going to be application sometimes takes a little while to open and as you can see it's loading all the different movies I have previously created. Now that iMovie is loaded we'll start by going to file new movie and as you can see there are a number of options from bright to bulletin board etc etc for the purpose of what I'm doing, I'm going to deliberately press no theme. I press create. It's going to ask for name. I will call this using iMovie. And I press OK. And now I'm ready to do my masterpiece. Now, as you can see on the bottom, this is where the video footage would be, and this is where the audio footage will be. So, for example, if I wanted to bring in the video I made in the previous segment, I can go to my desktop, and there it is using QuickTime, and then literally I can drag the video. And now my video is here. First thing I have to do is go to the applications folder, which you can find over here. And of course, this video does seem familiar. Some of the things that I may want to add are things like a transition. So, for example, maybe I want to fade to black in the beginning. And if I want to lengthen the transition. I can change, I double click on it. And now we have a little transition. First thing I have to do is go to the application. Now, I might also want to add a title. So if I wish to add a title, I can add a title. And so over here, I'm going to type in a title. And as you see, I can lengthen the transition. And now let's see what the video looks like. First thing I have to do is go to the Applications folder which you can find over here. Now, as always, there are plenty of other text options. I chose to use the pop-up one, but I could have used virtually any of these transitions. Similarly, with the transitions, 
I could have used any of these transitions from the cross dissolve to the cross blur, the fade to black we've seen already. So we'll look at the spin out or the circle to open or the cube or the mosaic as well as any of the other ones that are here. Additionally, if it suits me, I can also add a map. So by double clicking on the watercolor globe, now I have this watercolor globe. Just like if I wanted to, I could look at the educational globe. And again, this kind of effect is kind of cool, but obviously not meant for everything. Similarly, if I wanted a curtain, I could have a curtain effect. At the same time, should I choose to, I could pick um, music from my iTunes library. In this case, I really don't have much here to show. I could also go to sound effects. This comes from the garage van, so I could have an auto closed door. If I wanted to have an electric guitar, I could have that. If I want a duck, I could have a duck. Or if I want a race car, I could have a race car. In any case, as you can see, there are no shortage of ideas. Now, I think I'm going to get rid of this curtain that I put in, because I really don't need it, to be truthful. And I probably, though, should close with the transition. We started with the transition, so we'll close with the transition. So we did fade to black to start, and we should do a fade to black to end. I could, again, do the 2.0. Now they're seeming to say that that may not be a good idea, so I'm actually, because it might cut off part of my video if I do that, so I'm going to change it to 1.0. Let's see what it looks like when I do with 1.0. First thing I have to do is go... So it doesn't cut off any of my video content. And closing it... I'm going to press stop now. See you in a moment. Okay. And finally, I want to export my video so I go to file share and I have many options I could send it to iTunes I could send it to YouTube I could send it to Facebook or I could do the traditional file I press next and then it will save my file to the desktop and that's it we're done for now now that you created your video using QuickTime and edited your video using iMovie or some other application, it is time to add closed captioning to our video. Naturally, there are a number of software titles that can accomplish this task. However, we will focus on using YouTube to achieve this. YouTube can be accessed through google.com or through youtube.com. I, of course, first click on sign in. If I have a sign in account, I simply sign in. If I do not, I press create an account. I would put in my last name, first name, follow the other on screen prompts. I have to of course do this text verification. It will then validate my account and then I'm ready to get to business. Since I have a YouTube account, I'm going to simply directly log in to my YouTube account so that I can demonstrate how easy it is to use the closed captioning tools. So right over here I'm pressing upload. I press public. I then find the video I wish to upload. 
while I'm waiting for the video to upload, I can type in the description if I want to. I can also choose to leave the description blank and the tags blank if I want to. In this case, I will type in some tags like comedy, math, etc., etc. I'll write a little description here. Now that we've finished uploading our video to YouTube, it is time to add closed captioning. You can add closed captioning by pressing the CC button. I then add new subtitles. I'm going to overwrite what I previously did. And I could upload the file. The problem with doing that is then all the text becomes jumbled. I would rather use transcribe and set timings. So now, using my Word document, I copy the text, I then go back here, I paste it, I press set timings. Now that we've waited a few moments, as you can see, the closed captioning has been processed. Let's take a look at that for a brief moment. Full force. Briefcases in hand. The swap took place. Outside the classroom, a group of students were flicking cards against the wall. Elsewhere, another group of students played with their PSPs. In one back corner of the classroom, the daily arm wrestle competition was on. So as you can see, by simply allowing YouTube to transcribe the timings, all the work has been done for you. And so we're done doing our closed captioning.